The equivalent of 485 million trash cans full of socks are wasted every year. 20% of that is due to odor, which is nearly 100 million trash cans. So this got us thinking, what if you didn't have to worry about odor? Imagine you could conquer odor. Hi, my name is Callie. And I'm Matthew, the founder of Oxox. Stink-free socks designed to neutralize your foot odor and let you pursue whatever you're passionate about without the embarrassment of stinky feet. Let me introduce you to Carly, one of the first members of the Ox family. Carly's mom saw one of our first ever social media posts on LinkedIn and she immediately messaged me. She told me that she couldn't find anything to prevent her daughter's feet from stinking. And she bought a pair. So this got me thinking. What if Carly could go to school, straight to her cheer practice, and make it home without feeling belittled by her peers or told to stick her socks and shoes in a bag on the car ride home? With one out of every six people in the US suffering from severe foot odor, there needs to be a solution to this unmet need. Introducing Ox Socks, patent pending, stink free socks. So, how did I do it? It all started with a hand towel. One day, my roommate came home with a towel that lets you wash your hands without soap. My first thought went to my feet. I contacted over 100 different manufacturers, tested over 50 different samples, took them through week long stink tests, and after finding one working pair, Oxox was born. When you look at the sock industry as a whole, Nike and Adidas are the biggest players, but what they have are moisture wicking socks, which help alleviate foot odor, but don't neutralize it. And then there's Merino wool, which is popular amongst the hiking community, but smells rancid after a long wear. And then there's the age old Odorex spray, which is tedious to reapply, moist and sticky. And it comes off with sweat. Imagine that. With socks that are two times as durable as a traditional sock and half as many needed, that can lead to a 50% reduction in sock waste or five and a half million tons saved annually in a perfect ox ox world. With 85% of all textiles ending up in landfills every year and much of that affecting mainly minority areas, we're ready to make a dent in this industry. Oh, and did I mention that we help your local environment as well? Right now, we're utility patent pending and have four pending trademarks. We're working on continuing to increase our robust IP strategy to make it more and more difficult for our competitors to copy or mimic our technology. The science behind the socks are rather simple. The foot sweats the most out of any part of the body. So when you apply a sock to it, it creates a warm, moist environment for odor-causing bacteria to grow. What we do is neutralize that odor-causing bacteria on impact. Whether it's cold or hot, wet or dry, your feet will not stink. And in the last four months, we've made over $60,000 off of stinky feet. Not to mention over 12% of returning orders, over 4,300 pairs sold, and 40 states are already wearing ox socks, and not one mention of an ineffective product. Just like the standard that we set in our socks, our profit margins are high. 82% in our single packs and 70% on our three packs. And the national media attention has blown our socks off, resulting in CBS, USA Today, and ABC. Right now, we're selling direct to consumer through our Shopify site and have already had a major Division I college baseball team contact us to outfit all of their athletes in Ox Socks. We're working on getting into niche retail locations, as well as working on affiliate programs, so that way people that love Ox Socks just like us can sell for us. Additionally, we're looking to license our technology as another source of revenue. And through personal conversations with our first 1,000 customers, we've identified moms of youth athletes ages 10 to 24 as our ideal target customer. But it's more than just that. It's helping people like Carly transform from embarrassed to confident overnight. Our competitive advantage is the effectiveness of our technology. Where our competitors measure their effectiveness in mere hours, we measure in days. Let's take Sue from Columbia, Missouri. Sue loves to play pickleball, but she had a problem. Her feet stink and it transferred to her shoes. So much so that she had to throw away her shoes consistently. That's when she discovered Ox Socks. She tried it for the first time and loved it. 
So much so that she gave some to her daughter, who plays softball at the University of North Carolina. Now her daughter thought it was too good to be true, and she took it through the ultimate stink test, one of their practices. That's when she realized that she loved it as well, and she started to tell her teammates, but it gets better. Sue spread the word of Oxox around her community, and now all five of her pickleball teammates wear exclusively Oxox, not to mention her connecting us with this WNBA star and the number seven ranked pickleball professional in the world who is now wearing Oxox. Sue emails us on a weekly basis to check in, give feedback, and offer her suggestions. And that is just one of the hundreds of stories where Oxox is literally transforming lives. We even have the TCU swim team wearing Oxox, and they're raving about it, creating TikToks because they love them so much. Through sports, I've learned that I cannot do it all myself. It takes a great team, and that's why we're continuing to recruit and build exceptional talent such as the ex-president of Spanx, who met Sarah Blakely when they were valued at $3 million and helped take her all the way to the recent $1.2 billion acquisition. So at $60,000 today, we anticipate getting to $750,000 by the end of our first year. And we've laid out some of the steps we deem necessary to get there, such as marketing at major youth sporting tournaments, leveraging both professional and semi-professional youth athletic endorsements, utilizing an, a powerful affiliate group, such as Giddy Up, and having a new Netflix series contact us asking if we would be the, the sock of choice in their new show. So what's next for Oxox? We want to continue to make a dent in this textile industry. So we intend to partner with a group like the Sustainable Apparel Coalition. We're increasing our models, such as the Crew Sock, that's right in front of you, that will be released in the next month and we're continuing to increase our awareness, getting into these niche retail locations and getting in front of moms at their deepest pain points, tournaments. And through personal conversations with Sue and Carly and hundreds of others, we've confirmed that increasing our awareness is gonna unlock our next major stage of growth. So that's why we wanna pour money into these uh, tournaments, so that way we can get in front of moms where they're smelling these, seats, these feet consistently. That'll get us in front of approximately 60,000 moms, turning your return on investment into $130,000. Now we need inventory to keep up with this demand, so we wanna have three months of inventory on hand. And then we need contract labor because we cannot do it all ourselves. They're gonna help us pack and get on, the, uh, get on the ground in front of these parents at these tournaments. So let's go odorless. Step up and let's rid the world of stinky feet. Thank you. Great presentation. Um, so I'm looking at your packaging. Is this the packaging you'd have in the store? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, a thought, how does the consumer know this uh, message that you're giving us? You know, so compelling, but when I look at the, the, the package, it doesn't really tell me it's stink free or, you know, the story that you just gave me, how does the consumer pick that up? Right, yes, ma'am. Yeah, so we're going to work on increasing our packaging. This was our original design we just launched four months ago. We're going to have um, the UPC barcodes as well on there, so that way we can really visualize and, like you said, tell that story, make it engaging for the customer, make it part of that exceptional experience. And you might think about letting the customer touch it as well. So when they're in the store, you know, they want to be able to feel the fabric. So just a, a few thoughts. That's a fantastic idea. Thank you. Can you talk any, a bit about the technology? Like why is it odor free or minimize the odor? Yes, absolutely. So odor stems from bacteria. Mm -hmm. So we've got antibacterial threads built into the sock that helps neutralize that odor causing bacteria on impact. And so we've got it strategically placed around the sock at the points where your foot creates that uh, bacteria and that sweat. And that's what eliminates the, the foot odor. So realistically, how long before I have to wash it? <laughs> That's a great question. I always say it's personal preference. Some people like fresh socks every day. I actually had someone come up to me at the gym the other day and said he'd been wearing his socks for a month and oh, hadn't gross. washed it and they gross. didn't stink. I love, I love the month. The month is great. That's great. It, that, one, that one shocked me. <laughs> Excellent presentation. I'd love to hear more about your distribution channels and how you've thought about that. I, you talked a lot about moms. You talked to, I know you're online, you're B2C. 
What about thinking big, the Walmarts, the Kohl's, the Targets? Yeah. What, tell me a little bit more about how you're thinking about your distribution channel. Absolutely. So the ex-president of EvoShield is one of our advisors, as well as uh, the ex-president of Spanx. And what they suggested is starting in the niche retail locations, where the big players like Nike and Adidas are not. So that way we can capture that and learn how to play in the retail game. And once we start to get that, we can get into the smaller sporting goods stores, like a Hibbit Sports. And then from there, you can grow into an Academy and then a Dix. Why not just focus on DDC? Um, website, Amazon, social media, convert it all. Um, you know, it's going through retail is a much more challenging game. And you know, if you already have this much traction, just focus all your energy online and then build a brand and then the retailers come to you. Yes, and that's a great suggestion. We're starting the direct-to-consumer model, so that way we're not trying to fight to get into retail. We want our customers asking retailers to get in there, and that's why we're starting Niche. And then from there, um, starting Niche in the retail, and then, um, let's see. Then go into like more Walmart. Right, get, Walmart. yes, and so, okay, yes. So that's gonna give us the legit legitimacy factor as well. So getting into like a Target or a Walmart gives us that legitimacy factor. But like I mentioned, we need to start niche so that way we're not getting charged with the chargebacks and things like that. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. I'd recommend just growing your direct-to-consumer online. Okay. Definitely pursue an Amazon store. Absolutely. Uh, and maybe some other online options. Just, Absolutely. And just grow the business that way until you feel you're ready and you, you understand what happens behind the scenes. It's, and just sorry um, about the um, the unique technology. What is, can you share more about your patent and how does that protect you? Yeah, absolutely. So our patent is on the unique thread design and then the placement in our sock. Uh -huh. Because it's strategic spots around the foot that sweat the most, such as between the toes. Because it's so moist and creates that, that odor causing bacteria. Can you talk to us a little bit more about your price point? So I see online you're at 40 bucks, just kind of cross through pricing. Absolutely. Where do you want to stay? How's that gonna change over time? Absolutely, so we're gonna stay between 15 and $20 a pair. Right now, the exclusive luxury socks are priced between 15 and $24 a pair, sometimes up to 28. And the other thing is we feel like we're not competing necessarily in the sock market. Because a lot of people who suffer with this are buying products that they have to refill, like these sprays, these powders, these beads that they put in their shoes. So we're competing against them. And then we've got the comfort, comfortability with our socks, and let's see. Our customers are bragging that this is the most comfortable sock they've ever put on their foot. So we have the comfort, the comfort with our socks as well that competes with those companies like Lululemon who don't have this technology. Just again, great presentation. I guess it, just a question on, on your, your market segment. I, I'm just kind of interested to understand how you're leveraging, you know, you mentioned you've got a WMB player that's, that's wearing your stocks. You've got this Netflix sock of choice, which I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds interesting. Like how are you capitalizing on some of those opportunities to really promote your brand and your stock? So the WNBA player and the Netflix thing are brand new. The, NBA, or the Netflix show actually just messaged us right when we got here in Fort Worth. So I have a call with them next week. And then the WNBA player, we're still in conversation about the sponsorships and working around uh, her agent, or working with her agent and seeing what she can do. Um, but you know, 85% of our customers are women. And women typically are not getting these massive deals, the women athletes, that a lot of the guys are like in the NBA or NFL. So these girls are looking up to these athletes. And so if we can partner with them, it'd be an exceptional opportunity. Have you thought about your end game? Yes, we have. Um, and we know that companies like Adidas and Nike are going to catch on once they see what we're doing. We anticipate about a million dollars in sales. So we want to try to get to 10 million as quickly as possible. And it would be easier for them to buy us versus them trying to squash us and create their own product. And then that way they can pay us and then we're on our way. So, so when you get to that point, what do you envision your, your product um, offering would look like besides, is it just socks or? Are you going to add different types of products as well? We're focusing on the sock model. Just, just like Chick-fil-A, we're keeping it simple. Our technology has the ability to be applied to undershirts, sports bras, underwear, panties, things like that. But we're focusing on socks. We're increasing to the, or the crew socks, and then we're working on soccer socks as well. Chick-fil-A is keep it small and keep it all. Um, what is you as the founder, what is your perspective on that? Right now, I own 100% of the business. Um, I'm willing to step down as CEO if that comes to it. As far as uh, the equity piece, I think if we have somebody that 
can help take us to the next level, I'm willing to hand off a uh, percentage of equity there. So you would take private equity? Yes. And it sounds to me like the answer is also yes to step down if you knew the company would survive. Yes. Or do better without you. Yes, absolutely. Because each stage of growth needs different levels of experience. And so right now, it might need a jack of all trades, but once we get to that 10 million number, or whatever the number might be, somebody who has experience growing from there. Can you talk a little bit about your supply chain? Like who's making this, where yes. are you getting it from? Exactly. Absolutely, great question. So right now, we're being produced in China. We had a meeting with a North Carolina manufacturer who's been making Nike socks for the last 50 years, all the NFL game day apparel. And um, so we're working on getting samples made with them. We're working on the cost there. Additionally, we're looking at Pakistan and Guatemala as additional manufacturing facilities because we don't want to be stuck to one spot. If there's another issue like COVID or some kind of political challenge or logistics, North Carolina we can drive to. And then we have other spots around the world that we have uh, ability, plan A, B, C, and D lined up. And what about the cost side of things? So we anticipate Pakistan, Guatemala, and China to be about the same cost. We're still working on the cost with North Carolina. They're working on the samples right now, and they said when they're done, they'll be able to give us a concrete number, but it's looking like it'll be about one and a half to two times uh, the cost of what we're doing in China. So on your direct-to-consumer strategy, um, are you doing all that in-house, or are you already hiring or like an agency or um, a, like a, a consultant? Yeah, right now it's been in-house. We're looking at Giddy Up specifically as an affiliate marketer because they've got a massive team of affiliate marketers and we'd give up a percentage of the sales and they'd be paying for the advertising and all that good stuff and they're driven to want to sell because they're getting paid back on those returns. So, so based on the audience, um, you said 75 are women? Yeah, 85% yeah, female. You know, QVC might be a good place to, uh, to pitch this because it's mainly an, a, a female audience. Um, and I think it'll do well. That's why I'm focusing on direct consumer because you could tell the story online, um, on the shelf, unless people know about the brand. Right. It's just another pair of socks, right? Right, absolutely. And we have thought about QVC, that's a great idea. I would continue to encourage to push you to think about um, your values in terms of accepting private equity or not. It's just a matter of time. You have, you, you have an excellent presentation immature, um, you're not trying to get something to work, it is working, you're trying to scale it, you're at a threshold of infancy. And so I would imagine you'll get approached time and time again for private equity. It's time to start thinking about those values and whether or not you are, whether, uh, what, what are the, the, the shadow side and the light side of doing so. Absolutely, yes ma'am. Thank you. Yes. W one more thing. Is there like an odor tracking device on the market that you guys could use as part of your marketing play? Like it has, yeah, I don't know, a scale? That, that's a great question. So what we've been doing is making entertaining TikTok videos, and this has been fantastic to give us a legitimacy. We'll wear a normal sock for a week, and an, or excuse me, an ox socks for a week, and a normal sock for a day, and we'll go up to people with those mannequins and say, guess which one's been worn longer? And everybody guesses the sock that's been worn for a day versus the ox sock that's been worn for a week. Got it. So, but there's no technology that can quantify it. There's no technology that quantifies odor, but because we're antibacterial, we're working on testing with the University of Georgia to, to give that legitimacy data point behind it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.